is Tuesday, September 8. Welcome to CGN News. A police probe in Jamaica has revealed that a permit was granted for the staging of Usain Bolt's birthday party, which was held on August 21 at a location in St. Andrew. Assistant Commissioner of Police Anthony McLaughlin on Monday told Radio Jamaica News that the permit was granted by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. Bolt tested positive for COVID-19 days after the event. ACP McLaughlin said he was awaiting a response from the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, to determine whether international footballers Leon Bailey and Raheem Sterling, who were at the event, were in breach of the 14-day mandatory quarantine order. Sebastian Marcus Day, a former U.S. Marine who fled to St. Lucia in 2014, while facing child pornography charges, has been repatriated to face the courts, according to U.S. media. WFTV7 reported that Day traveled to St. Lucia right after the sheriff's office executed a search warrant at his home, leading to 25 counts of possession of child pornography. The next few years reportedly saw law enforcement deputies working with the Department of Justice's Office of International Affairs to have Day extradited. The extradition was completed this week after Day's petition to overturn it was denied. Guyana's ruling People's Progressive Party, Civic PPPC, on Monday said that it is committed to easing racial tension in the country. President Ifran Ali acknowledged that race conflict is a very important issue, not only for his new government, but for all Guyanese collectively. Ali was responding to suggestions from reporters that the country has entered into a new phase of racial tension given the electoral victory of his Indo-based political party over the Afro-Guyanese-dominated opposition party. He said that the traditional media has a role to play in ensuring racial harmony while being critical of social media in that regard. A pyramid scheme in Trinidad and Tobago called Blessing Circle with over 1,200 members crashed, leaving the members fleeced of their hard-earned money. According to a report in the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian, the Blessing Circle was just a disguised pyramid scheme with admins giving the groups different names. The pyramid scheme members in the group called Blessing Overflow were asked to pay $700 to join with the promise that they would receive over $18,000 in blessings. The payout was dependent on recruiting new members to invest. The scammed members are now searching for the group admin known only as CASIM. Venezuela's opposition leader Juan Guaido called Monday on the armed forces to support a boycott of December's contested legislative polls and help escalate international pressure on President Nicolas Maduro. In an address on social media, Guaido urged the military high command to join a unity pact of opposition forces to block the holding of the December 6 polls. Quote, stop hiding behind the dictator's skirts, stop ignoring reality in Venezuela, end quote, the AFP reported Guaido as saying in a message addressed to the high command. In January 2019, Guaido declared himself acting president, claiming that Maduro had stolen his 2018 re-election in a rigged vote. Maduro's socialist government is targeted by a slew of international sanctions, including a U.S. oil embargo. Tropical storm Paulette formed Monday morning in the central Atlantic far from land. The storm's maximum sustained winds were near 40 miles per hour, with modest strengthening expected over the next few days, the U.S. National Hurricane Center said. The storm was centered about 1,205 miles west of the Cabo Verde Islands and moving west-northwest near 3 miles per hour. The storm comes amid an active hurricane season but is not currently a threat to land. Overseas now, poisoned Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny's condition has improved allowing doctors to take him out of an induced coma, the German hospital treating him said on Monday. Navalny, a fierce high-profile critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin, was flown to Germany last month after falling ill on August 20 on a domestic flight in Russia. German chemical weapons experts say that tests show 
The 44-year-old was poisoned with a Soviet-era nerve agent, prompting the German government last week to demand that Russia investigate the case. Quote, the patient has been removed from his medically induced coma and is being weaned off mechanical ventilation, end quote, Berlin's Sharit Hospital said in a statement. Video sharing site TikTok is struggling to take down clips showing a man killing himself. The footage, which has been circulating on the platform for several days, originated on Facebook and has also been shared on Twitter and Instagram. TikTok is hugely popular with young people, and many have reported coming across the video and being traumatized by the content. The app said it would ban accounts repeatedly uploading clips. Facebook told BBC News that they removed the original video last month on the day it was streamed and have used automation technology to remove copies and uploads since that time. Several people have streamed their suicides on Facebook Live since its 2015 launch. Donald Trump behaves like a mobster and has a low opinion of all black people, according to the U.S. president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. The allegations come from Cohen's new book, Disloyal, a Memoir written during his jail term for Trump campaign finance violations, among other crimes. Various U.S. news outlets have published quotes from the book, which comes out today. According to the BBC, Cohen claims Mr. Trump also made racist comments about Nelson Mandela and Hispanics. In the book, Cohen alleges that Mr. Trump is, quote, guilty of the same crimes, end quote, that landed him in prison and calls his former boss, Quote, a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a bully, a racist, a predator, a con man, end quote. The White House says Cohen is lying. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.